today. Thank you for joining Lori Haywood uh, Main's uh, window today on Periscope. And um, if this is, uh, uh, if you're visiting for the live video, you can tap at the bottom of the screen. You can share this on live video. I mean, excuse me, you can share it on uh, social media. You can send hearts through by tapping on the screens. You can also send the hearts through um, when you uh, watch it in an archive. Um, I want to let you know that today is uh, Thursday, March 30th. I am a Bible teacher. I teach the Word of God Monday through Friday for about uh, 15 to 25 minutes, and that's with the intro and the um, ending of the broadcast. I'm just going to show you my card real quick so that you can also see it, and that's uh, LoriHaywood-Mains.com. Uh, All these um, broadcasts are on that website. And um, and you'll get to know uh, my husband and I on that website as well. Uh, if I haven't mentioned it, you are visiting Michigan. Uh, it's not a very nice day out there. My gosh, it's a little cloudy, a little cold, but that's okay. We are in spring, and that means that uh, those beautiful, warm, sunshiny days are going to be here to stay for the next few months. And um, we can have fun um, on the inside, we're warm and cozy, and, and thank God for that, right? So let's just be thankful for what we can be thankful for, and then these dark, gloomy days just uh, seem to dissipate, right? Uh, listen, um, I think I covered everything. I always pray 30 minutes before I come on at one point uh, during the day for the broadcast. Um, let's see, what I, oh, I know what I wanted to tell you. At the bottom of the screen on those three dots when you're watching through Periscope, you can uh, email uh, these videos by link. It'll just uh, do it automatically. All you have to do is hit that third square on the right once you hit those three dots. And I, I can't remember what opens up there, but uh, it allows you to send these as links. So invite your friends. Please follow me. Um, that's how I get the Word of God out there. And um, send your hearts through. Communicate with me on the website. And if I happen to pray for someone at the end of this broadcast, um, like I may call out that uh, someone is dealing with some type of sickness or God is speaking to you, that is because um, as a born-again spirit for a Christian, you should operate in the gifts of the Spirit so that when the Holy Spirit is, is reaching out to you, um, for the ones who need, need some type of um, answer or deliverance or touch from God, then he'll use a vessel like me. So I just uh, wanted to share that with you because yesterday I did call somebody out um, that was dealing with something um, uh, when they were on their couch. So I just wanted you to understand that that is scripture, it's New Testament, and um, it's, uh, I can't exactly uh, think where the, those are. I think it's Corinthians. Uh, first or second chapter, but don't hold me to that because I'm not sure, and I don't want to get into that right now. I want to get into the Word. We've been talking about uh, Psalms 91 real quick. Oh, shoot, i got to start my clock, too, so that I don't keep you guys. Here we go. It'll just take a second. We've been talking about Psalms um, 91 for the past uh, couple days, and um, what we are doing is we're breaking it down uh, by about uh, two scriptures at a time because this is so packed. Uh, God's Word is packed. Uh, I love uh, the Word of God because every time I take time to meditate or uh, study, read, think, chew on it, whatever you do, um, that something um, gets illuminated, something uh, comes to life off the pages. And uh, it is life, and, and it brings life to you, and that's what we all want. Remember, God is good. Um, sickness, disease, lack, poverty, oppression, depression, um, any kind of um, uh, anything that is negative does not come in the arena of God. Um, if you've happened to meet Christians or churches that are negative and uh, the doom and gloom, then I, I'm sorry to say that that is not a good leader or maybe a good body or maybe a good uh, structure. Um, God, God is life, healing, and health, and, and all that is good. And um, how would you like really to... How would you like it if... Um, anytime someone talked about you uh, to the world or to, to whoever, they talked uh, about you negatively. 
Um, we tend to believe that God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are these uh, type of spiritual beings that, um, excuse me, you guys, that are spiritual beings that cannot be um, touched uh, or that they don't um, have a response or a uh, perception of what's going on. Um, and they do. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit grieves, that we can grieve the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that God uh, laughs in the heavenlies. He walked with Adam. He talked with Adam. Uh, Jesus cried um, and when uh, Lazarus um, uh, passed away. Um, we are made in the image of God. Um, and therefore, you can, you can look at your own being and, and, and relate to um, uh, God's magnitude is higher and greater, but you can also relate to him t for you to understand that he can be touched. It says he can be touched. So back to this point of how would you like to be um, God and um, or how would you like to be talked about uh, um, like God is talked about and um, people addressed you as uh, this this being that um, you know would put sickness on a child um, just so that uh, you could teach that child something um, and um, that's what we're doing when we talk uh, about God that way when we say uh, in our, our um, finite being that um, God has put um, disease on a child so that we can be used for ministry down the road or because um, he's mad at you or because he doesn't have enough healing in heaven or he doesn't have enough children in heaven so he's, he's taking your child and they have sickness. Uh, how would you like to be talked about like that? That's the kind of glory that um, churches or Christians out there by ignorance um, that's the kind of praise they're giving their very God who created them and, and gave everything he had to save them, which was Jesus, his only son. He sent him here to the earth, and, and he was crucified, and it pleased the Lord. Why? So that you could be saved. And these, these religious churchgoers that are uh, damning the very nature of our God really doesn't make uh, me happy. Um, it's, it's, um, it's a righteous anger. It's a righteous indignation. It's a righteous um, uh, uh, hurt. I, I can't stand it because he's so the opposite. So what I'm here to tell you is that all of that is not God. Okay? So let's get into the word. Or I'm going to end up on a whole nother topic, right? Psalms 91, we're going to look at... Uh, we're, we've got about 15 minutes left. We're going to look at uh, verse. Um, we're going to look at verse four. We went through uh, one, uh, and then we went through two and three, and today we're just going to go through four and five. Uh, and this is Psalms 91, and these are the verses. Um, again, I want to mention one more time before I start that if I misspeak uh, it, and, and I say something that is not 100% lined up with this, it's because um, I'm moving so quickly that sometimes I don't realize I'm misspeaking. Um, but hey, I would love it if, if I say something that's not an actual biblical fact and you know it like a, a wrong name or a wrong book or something, then just put it up there uh, as you communicate back or, or uh, come to my website and email me there. Um, because uh, I can't catch everything because I'm talking and I'm teaching, so I can't always hear exactly how I'm saying something. So just know that, all right? But these, uh, we do look at these after they're done, so I do see some of those, but I'm not going to keep coming back every day and saying, oh, I misspoke because it, that's just way too much time consuming, and I really don't think you care. We all uh, mess up with our conversation a little bit here and there, so we'll just move on. So, um, Okay, so we're in uh, Psalms 91, and what we're talking about in the book of Psalms is um, they think either uh, David or um, Moses uh, was the author uh, of the um, Psalms. And um, we talked about the secret place um, and how um, 
this this author was um, declaring in verse 2 um, how he declared, I will say of the Lord, that's a declaration, and then um, being um, protected from the snare of the fowl and anoisance pestilence, which is disease. And um, so now we're in, in verse 4, and that says, excuse me, that he shall cover, he shall, he shall cover. Uh, who is he? He is God. He is um, Almighty God, and the, um, I believe it's David. So just for, uh, just for conversation purposes, I'm going to say David. It, it, it may not be uh, accurate, but it's, it's somebody um, that's in this Bible. So I'm just going to say David, okay? There's, there's a lot of reasons why I can say that, but I can't get into it. But I'm just going to call the author of this David for my little bubble, okay? So David said, and he's declaring, and he's saying um, uh, how God is going to take care of him. And he's, de he's declaring it. And now um, he's talking about he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. Well, and then his truth shall be your shield and buckler. He shall cover you with his feathers. Um, uh, what's that talking about, that God has feathers? No, that's just an analogy of uh, a type of uh, chick that would take um, her babies in and uh, protect. It's, a, it's, a, it's a also an analogy of a mother who would take in their young and protect. That's the nature of the, um, and I'm not saying it's not the nature of, of the male, but for the most part is the nature of the female that takes in the babies and, and, and nurtures and protects and covers and, and uh, surely a father would do the same thing in a different way, but it's more of a nurturing, I'm going to protect you, I'm going to hover over you, I'm going to protect you, I'm going to cover you. And uh, so that's what um, the author is talking about here. And then also he goes on to say that, um, and then once you're under there, under the wings, under the wings of this, um, this mother or father God in this instance, you shall trust. And then it says, uh, the word trust um, is a very um, deep and powerful word that we have butchered um, as people. Um, we, we say, um, you know, in God we trust on our dollar bill. Well, do, you know, do we trust? Uh, we trust um, uh, when we go to uh, get married, we, we uh, share the wedding rings, we take our vows, and, and we, we enter into this trust. Um, we want our kids to trust us. Uh, we want, you know, our animals to trust us. And then what do we do with that trust? We, um, we fail miserably because we're human beings. And to be very uh, honest with you, we're really not to be trusted <laughs> because we are, we don't have, um, we don't have the type of the level, the intelligence, the maturity uh, to have that type of trust put into another human being because we're not perfect. Now, I'm not downing um, loving and trusting someone, but there's levels of that trust. There's levels of it. And uh, so we tend to look at God's word as... Um, when he says, um, then under my wings you shall trust, we try to picture that as uh, our trust. And um, w then you're looking at, at that situation, you're thinking, how in the world do I trust God really? How do I really trust God when I know I've been hurt? I've been hurt by my wife, or I've been hurt by my husband, or I've been hurt by my son, I've been hurt by my daughter, I've been hurt by my mom, I've been hurt by my dad, I've been hurt by my country, if you're in the military, or if you're in politics, I've been hurt by the government, or uh, you name it. So we're like, now God is asking for us to trust him, and, and I, I'm dealing with something that I don't understand. And, 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 um, and now you're telling me I've got to trust you? Really? How, how do I trust when I've been let down? Well, again, the trust that, it have, that, that you place in a human being is there's levels of trust. And um, 
uh, the word of God does not ever say to trust man. The word of God in, uh, I believe it's Psalms, says to love man and trust God. It, it, nowhere does it tell man to trust man. It says love man and trust God. But we've got it backwards. What we do is we love God and we put our trust in man. And then we get, we get very hurt. We get very disappointed because we think, and uh, because of uh, lack of knowledge, we believe that love is a loving man. It means that you're going to have 100% um, trust in them and that they're not going to let you down. And, and that's, not what that, that's not what that is saying at all. God is saying to love man and then trust him. So what, what happens is if, if you trust man and love God, you're setting yourself up for failure. You will get very, very hurt. Now, are, Lori, are you saying that if I trust God and love man, I'm not going to get hurt? No, uh, I wish that were so, but that's not the truth. You will still get hurt, but it's at a different type of understanding. And that is one of the keys that um, is God uses and Satan uses to God uses it to help you and Satan uses it to destroy you. If you are um, trusting, if you are trusting man and loving man and loving God, but you're trusting man and you're loving man, and then that man, a mankind is what I'm saying, not just a man. Uh, when man hurts you, you just plummet. I mean, you're just like a missile just going straight for the earth. Kapow. And then it may take a few years to clean that mess up, right? That is a very, very devastating explosion to happen inside you because you put all this trust, all this love. Uh, and what you're doing is you're putting a trust that belongs in God. Okay, and then you love man with all your heart, the word says. You love man with all your heart. The word says, oh man, nothing but love. And then you trust God. So then when you get hurt by man, yes, you get hurt. This is true. But, excuse me, uh, you get hurt. But what happens is that huge explosion before, like the missile hitting the earth, that doesn't happen. Now you get hurt and you do have disappointment and there'll be a bit of a time of healing, of course, because we're people. We don't want to be hurt, but you, you understand in a different maturity level that, that, that the person who hurt you never had the capacity not to hurt you. Okay, so, so even though you're hurt, you're like, but I understand, I understand here with the perception, the maturity of God. I understand that man itself, mankind, doesn't have the ability not to hurt me. So I, I, I understand that they are, they're not perfect and, and, and they can hurt me and they have hurt me. And therefore, I will forgive them just as I've been forgiven by God. And I mean, it, it may not be easy, but, but you do it. But when you trust man and you love man and you get hurt, it's a terrible explosion. And we're, we were never, ever met, created to trust man. We're only created to trust God. So back to um, the scripture, thou shall, um, he shall cover uh, you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Now you know what the author's talking about when he says, under his wings shall you trust. Because there is a trust that is only between man 
and God. Because man, uh, because God is God, he sees everything from every angle all the way around. At 360, into not only your situation or who has hurt you, um, he, I, uh, let me say that again. He sees your whole situation in a 360. And what I mean by that is he doesn't only see you, he sees the other person that hurt you. And then, then whatever that hurt is, he sees why the, the person that hurt you was hurt. And that person was hurt. And that person was So see, God knows knows it all and so when he looks at your situation and your pain he's on both sides me and that person he, there's a domino effect of generations of 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 this hurt or, or or things gone wrong that only god can see and only god can take care of and uh, only god can heal and only god can solve only god can resolve only god can take care of that issue of whatever it is. So all he needs you to do is release and say, I trust you. I'm under your wing. I'm under your protection. And there is where I am going to lay my head during this time of trouble, of hurt, of devastation. And I'm sure there's some terrible devastations that are looking at me on the other side of that screen. I am not making light of this. I'm sh shedding light on this. Is that that's how we trust God. See, mankind doesn't understand what trust really is. Until you're hooked up to the one that is trust. Then you can find what this trust means. Like I said, you'll still get hurt. But it's with a different mindset and a different understanding, a different illumination, a different perception. So, therefore, as you get to know your God and you get to understand that he is trust and that he will, he will take you through uh, whatever you're going through, whatever you've been through, whatever you're going through, or what you will go through. Because as people on this earth, we are going to go through tribulation on this earth. It is impossible to be a human being and be in this earth and not have tribulation or get hurt. Let's, let's move on to um, the second part of that uh, verse 4. Okay, so now we understand where he says, He shall cover you with his feathers like a mother, uh, like a, a mother hen. Um, and under his wings shall you trust, there's the trust, his truth. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Okay, so we're going to focus real quick on this, um, this truth piece. I'm just going to check my time so I know how much farther. Okay, I have 10 minutes. Okay, so his truth shall be your shield and his truth shall be your buckler. Okay, so let's go to Ephesians uh, 6 real quick. And uh, Ephesians 6 verse 16. So, oh, let me see. Is that where I want to be? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can go there. We can go there because it'll cover the shield and buckler. Yeah, under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Okay, so what, what we're talking about here is um, uh, in Ephesians 6 is we're talking about um, someone that is, that is going through a type of warfare and they need an armor suit on. And uh, so what we're talking about is his truth. Let's see, what is that? His truth shall be your shield and buckler. So in verse 16 of chapter 6 of Ephesians, it talks here, Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And then I want to find one more in here. Um, in verse 14, Stand for this reason, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And then 16 again, Above all, take the shield of faith, which 
you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So above all, take the shield. And this is what um, in 91, Psalms 91 uh, in verse 4 was talking about. His truth shall be your shield. His truth shall be your shield. His truth shall be your shield. And in, in Ephesians 6, it says, above all, take the shield of faith. So what is the shield? His truth is the shield. And what is his truth? His truth is the written word of God. So and what it's saying is, with all, you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Well, fiery darts um, will be put out with water. And the Bible says that the, Bi the word of God is like washing the, um, washing, uh, I can't, can't think of the scripture, washing the 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 water by the word, washing by the water with the word. And um, so what, what's happening here is God's word is the truth. His, his, this is a written live word. And so when you are going through um, times of uh, any kind of hurt or devastation or fear of um, losing your house, fear of somebody, a doctor giving you a bad report about your health, fear of being served papers of divorce, fear of a child that is starting to run wild or a child that is running wild or fear of losing your job or um, what have you, it is, it is dealing with this fear of devastation, this fear of hurt, this fear of loss, this confusion. And this is what Psalms 91 is all about. It's extremely powerful. And uh, it says, His truth will be your shield and buckler. And in, in Ephesians, it says, The shield of faith which will be able to quench all the fiery darts. The fiery darts are the attack of the enemy. All these things that I just said that could and will or uh, may have come into your life, some type of um, uh, attack um, on your family, um, your health, what have you, um, what you what the, what's going to conquer, what's going to defeat that, is his written word now it's not going to defeat anything when it when the words lay still in the word of god what has to happen and and it will not happen any other way is until this word gets into you and comes back out through your mouth towards any situation that you are in and it will deliver you it will bring you out on the other side it will give you a supernatural peace it will put out the fiery darts of the wicked above all the shield of faith which is his truth will be your shield and it will be your buckler it will be your protector it will be your armor it will quench it will put out like the water of the word it will put out the fiery darts of the wicked that's what um uh his um truth will do for you he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust and his truth will be your shield and your buckler and then you shall not be afraid for the terror by night and for the arrow that flies by day. And we're going to take that up uh, probably verses uh, 5 and uh, maybe through 8 tomorrow. But um, church, uh, body of Christ, believers, the shield is the word of God. It's the truth. It's the truth of the matter. We talked about the other day about no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It's just a form and it's empty inside. But if, depending on what you fill that situation with, with your words, is what's going to come back against you. So the Holy Spirit is educating and showing you who he is, who God is, who Jesus is. And he wants to hear his word come back through you 
He wants you to trust him. And you can trust him. We talked about that. That does that doesn't mean that you're not going to get hurt. The only way you're not going to get hurt is is if if you check out of here and you're not living anymore. And then, depending on where you go, depends on if you're going to get hurt. Because if you go to hell, you're, you're going to really be hurt. You're going to be hurting. And uh, so, trusting God and loving man, and then going to God's word and speaking his word out. If you need healing, there's healing scriptures. If you need a financial breakthrough, there's financial scriptures. If you need deliverance, there's deliverance scriptures. You need salvation scriptures for your family, there's salvation scriptures. Email me. Uh, get a hold of me on this website. Okay? Because that's that's why I'm there. Lori Haywood hyphen mains dot com and M A I N S. Um I I'm not just coming out here to just um just talk. I, I'm here to help. That's why I'm here. And um, there's a vessel here that the Holy Spirit is is talking to you through me. And it, there's no problem. Listen, you're talking about Almighty God, the creator of the entire universe. There's nothing in your life, nothing in your life that he can't get you through the other side. This too will pass. This too will pass. But there's a way. There's a place. The secret place of the Most High. I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will declare. He will deliver me. He's my shield. He's my buckler. The Word of God is a shield. The truth is the Word of God. The truth is is the word of God. The truth is the nature of God. The truth is the nature of who he is. Remember we talked about how would you like it if every time someone talked about you, um, they would say, uh, oh yeah, you know, um, that that Henry, you know, he just, um, he just does all this negative stuff constantly to so and so and so and so and so and then he does this then he does that but he really does like you uh, you would be like wait a minute don't be saying that about me that's not me I, I wouldn't do that to somebody well that's what God is saying don't don't say I put sickness on you don't say that I cause this problem don't say I'm not going to help you don't say I'm teaching you and I'm mad at you these are lies his truth his this is his truth he is the lover he is the healer. He is the provider. He's trying to get to you to get you out of that mess. And he's also trying to get to the believer to get to know him more. Trust him. He knows everything around your situation in everyone's life that's in your life. You can, you may not be able to figure out why you're being attacked by so-and-so, but God knows. Does that mean he's going to come down and kill that person for you? No, because he's truth and he's just. And just is just all by himself. He's mature and he knows what's going on. But if you go under his wing and allow his truth to come out through your mouth, his word, to become your shield and say, let's, for instance, say um, you've gotten a bad medical report. His word says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. So you go under his wing and you trust him. And you say, no, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Because Jesus went on the cross and died for all my sickness, sin and disease. And that was nailed on the cross. And there, and he destroyed it. And there is healing in his wings. See, you return his word. He's he. Remember, we talked about that. That that tur that puts that key into his nature, and he's like, oh, there it is. I hear them, and it just unlocks the nature. It just happens. You draw it in. You draw it out. You release it with this, with your mouth, with your words. Hey, we're up. Okay, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for staying. I'm not going to keep you any longer. Just know how much God loves you, okay? Just know that. This is a place of joy and peace. Do not You'll never have to feel guilty or condemnation around me, okay? I'm not God. I'm just a messenger of God. Father, 
We just thank you that no one has to have condemnation in your presence because your word says there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. So I thank you that you love them and you love them so much you sent your son. There's no one out there that's looking at me through this window that they've done something so wrong that you cannot forgive or, or you don't love them. You do love them and you, you do forgive them, but they need to ask you to forgive them. And I thank you for releasing this word and teaching and, and leading and guiding them, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Now, if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, just say this after me, please. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask your Son to come into my heart. I, I say that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I want eternal life. I give my life to you. I repent of my sins. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Now take my life and do something with it. I give it to you. Fill me with your peace. Fill me with your healing. Fill me with your joy. Give me light. Let me sleep tonight. Let me eat. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. LoriHaywood-Mains.com. Don't forget to share this with your friends. All right. Bye now.